Hi everybody, Frank Sullivan, Mad Scientist. Now I got something interesting here. Um, my last video created quite a bit of uh, people talking about high pressure HHO. So I wanted to show you what I have here. This is a pressure unit that I built quite a while ago. And I've produced quite a bit of hydrogen out of this. I mean I literally ran this up a good 10 times at 500 PSI without a problem. This is a stainless steel scuba tank. Now this thing is rated for over 4,000 PSI. Not a biggie. Um, a lot of people have been saying that high pressure HHO is explosive and sure of course it is but you can achieve it and I have done it many many times. Now I'm not sure why uh, there's this big thing about high pressure HHO, it'll explode automatically. Hasn't happened for me. Not that maybe I got lucky, I don't know. But I li literally have done this at least 10 times out of this unit. Not an issue. But, anyways, I wanted to show you this and I wanted to show you exactly how I do it. And just for your uh, information, whenever I do this, I actually make it within under a minute. That's how fast the HHO gets produced. And how is that? Chemically. This is muriatic acid. You get this at Lowe's or Home Depot. And right next to it is just a piece of aluminum. So you got to cut it in the smaller strips. And there's my ball valve. And you can simply push it up. Oop, there was still stuff in there. Okay. So, once you open it up, you can drop that down, and then it reacts, and it's pretty hot on the bottom. It's sort of a chemical thermal reaction. If you're going to do this, and I stress if, I would suggest you do this my way and no other way. Otherwise, you could run into problems, because I ran into uh, an issue with it. In other words, you put the liquid in first, the muriatic acid, and then you put the aluminum pieces. Reason why is it takes a little while to pour down, especially through a funnel. And what I was getting was blowback. It was starting to react so fast it was pushing it back up and splashing everywhere. When I did it with the um, acid in there first and then I was dropping the pieces down, it gave me enough time to shut the valve. Now, there is another way you can do this. You can do iron filings. Now, I got these iron filings. This was simply rotor cuts for uh, cutting rotors for your car. They gave it to me. And they're all fine iron filings. And you can use sulfuric acid, which is battery acid. Now, the beauty about that one is it goes a slower reaction. It's not as fast. But the leftover is iron sulfate, which is an absolute top-end fertilizer for plants. A lot of people don't know this. And here's an interesting note. I found this out by doing a lot of research. They knew this stuff back in the Civil War era. In fact, so much so, they used iron filings and sulfuric acid and inflated. Okay, sorry about that uh, little interruption there. Um, I had a call coming in. It was the first time I was filming a video on my camera and a uh, call came in, so it was kind of odd. But, as I was saying, they did this during the Civil War era and we're just learning it. There's a lot of neat properties to this. This, you could actually stockpile and have ready for an emergency generator, so to speak. I've actually ran my generator off of it. Attached 500 PSI, ran it. Why not? Um, although there was a lot of things I didn't learn about it until not too long ago. Actually, when you're producing this, it's not quite HHO. It's a uh, acid-based version, like uh, this is, uh, I believe, sulfuric, uh, hydrogen, per, you know, type stuff. But it's fine, it burns, it's just, you got to be careful. Now, I stress careful because muriatic acid is nasty stuff. 
Do this outside. Do not, and I repeat, do not do it inside. You will, oh, it, it's bad. <laughs> Trust me on this, you're going to have to do it outside. And place it on a brick, because there is some heat, you know, uh, develops in order to do this process. Now, I'm going to show you a small example of this, and uh, I will attach it to this video. Now, just so you know, there is a ratio, as you do this, you can figure it out. The ratio of uh, acid to aluminum will produce certain amounts of um, HHO pressure-wise. I use it, you know, 1 through 100 PSI. Um, the thing about it is that uh, when you do the ratios, you, you'll be able to figure it out to where it'll eat away everything. That's the key to this. You produce the same amount of hydrogen with no residual left in the tank. That way you can start over fresh and your calculations are exact every time. Okay, I'm outside here and uh, just about have my experiment ready. I got a little uh, bottle there. I'm going to put a balloon on top of it and I'm going to blow up possibly two balloons and uh, I'll show you the reaction. Unfortunately, I got to set the phone off and set it down and I'll set it up and uh, re-record again. Alright, uh, I got the uh, acid in there and I got my aluminum pieces ready. Now, I'm going to put these in here and I'm going to have to drop the phone for a minute, so I'll turn it upside down and you can look at the sky and the trees. <laughs> Once I put on the balloon, I'll pick up the phone and we'll go from there. So, here we go. One, two, three. Alright. Alright, we're back. And it's already reacting. You can see that bubbling up pretty good. And the balloon is feeling. And it's feeling quite fast. <laughs> see, the more it reacts, the faster it goes. And there it goes. Whew, that balloon is getting big. And the bubbling is going quite considerably. Now I'm going to have to put you down again so I can put the second balloon on and fill it up. So, in just a minute, I'm going to let this one feel a little bit more. Wow, quite the reaction. Alright, I'm going to put you down. Okay, almost. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I had to put you down. There's my first balloon. Second one's going up, and you can see that violent reaction. Should have brought my meter out to see how hot it got, but this thing will go and go and go, depending on how much uh, aluminum you put in there. And it's pretty much on demand. You literally can run whatever you want off of this thing on demand. The trick is, is you got to be careful because it does get quite hot at the bottom. Okay. So, I think I'm going to stop this for right now. I'm going to tie this one off and we're going to have explosions. Okay, there's my two balloons and the reaction's still moving quite considerably. Now this is why I call myself the mad scientist. That's a balloon with HHO and I'm about to light it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's try to blow myself up. Alright, here we go. Whoa! Felt the heat on that one. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Mad scientist hits again. Oop. Lighter doesn't want to light. A little windy out here. Oh, come on, lighter. Wow, yeah, 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 yeah. That was, uh, whoo! <laughs> and the reaction's still going, and I blew him up right next to it. 
<laughs> Mad scientist strikes again! <laughs> All right. I am back again. I had to go over and do a couple things. I figured well, I would wait for this to go down. It's still going. This thing lasts for a little while and um, produces quite a bit. And there was only three little pieces of aluminum I put in there. So, <laughs> pretty neat stuff. Yeah, a couple last things. Uh, one is uh, the muriatic acid. Make sure you get regular muriatic acid, not the low odor stuff. It does not work. It's really terrible. You got to get regular muriatic acid. Uh, let's see. Secondly, another guy commented on my rocket tube right there. And uh, I, you know, had it in the video but never mentioned anything. All that is is a single tube cell. And I'll turn it on right here. Let's see. There we go. There it is. HHO being produced through a single tube cell. So, turn that one off. Now the other thing is I wanted to mention uh, I did a lot of calculations when I first did this. My intent was to try to run a vehicle like most people. What I found out was rather interesting. There are CNG cars out there, which is compressed natural gas. You can do the same thing with HHO, or this chemically produced HHO. I calculated it as about 10 bucks to fill up a normal gas tank. And it was surprisingly the same to produce or fill up a uh, CNG car with compressed natural gas. Now where the problem is is two things. Uh, when you produce or put um, compressed natural gas in a car it doesn't have as much power as normal gasoline. So you lose power in when you're driving. This is why I was developing this because it has more power than gasoline so you're going to increase with the same amount of cost. Um, also one other very big thing now this is probably the thing about why people wonder if HHO under pressure is explosive. You gotta use carbon fiber tanks in them. Stainless steel is fine. Carbon fiber is better. It will not explode. They had an issue with CNG cars or hydrogen compressed cars because people were using normal steel tanks or something else of the sort and the reaction of the HHO in there was causing a problem and it was exploding. I believe that's exactly why people are all freaked out about high pressure HHO. When you do it right with the right type of containers you will have no issues. Um, a lot of people have also mentioned that when they did it they weren't doing it quite safe there was static electricity and various things and of course anything under pressure you put gasoline under pressure or anything and you put a little static electricity it's gonna go boom <laughs> okay so it's a combination of stupid people wrong things to put and the wrong type just remember if you got a carbon fiber tank there is no issues in fact I've seen video of carbon fiber tanks they purposely blew up and it didn't explode it just hit and punctured a hole and let the gas out they're by far one of the safest uh, things you can use so that's my video on uh, HHO on demand HHO the boots and how it's produced chemically and answering a few people who were commenting